There's no art to slide writing. It's not an art and a science. It's just science. This is Harn Lee, a strategy and operations manager at Google. And he recently condensed 10 years of presentation experience into a 56 page playbook on how to write great slides. Specifically, he shares six tips across four pillars for a total of 24 guiding principles. But since nobody got time for all that, in this video, I'll focus on the top 10 tactics we can all use right away to build effective presentations. Starting with arguably the most important element in our slides, the headlines. And Hearn states, the best headlines fall into one of two categories, action-led and assertive. For example, the iFold is an innovative new product. This is passive and uninsightful. Like who would ever argue that a new product is not innovative? Now compare that to $5 billion investment needed for iFold to be the market leader is action-led. We need $5 billion. The iFold will capture 47% of the foldables market by 2030 is an assertive statement. Pro tip, if you're struggling with this, simply input this into ChatGPT or Google Gemini. The best slide headlines are action-led or assertive. Your task is to rewrite my current headline, insert current headline, give me three variations for each. Next, we can stress test our slides by asking ourselves, if we were to delete everything except the headlines, do they still tell a coherent and logical story? If not, they're either gaps in our story we need to fill in with a slide, or they're redundant slides we can remove without affecting our key message. Speaking of slides, I actually have a Google Slides template you can download for free as part of my workspace toolkit. I'll link that down below. Presentation tactic number two is a very sneaky one, and it is to influence with tone. For example, compare these two statements. We have a clear roadmap to capture 25% of the AI market by 2030. And capturing 25% of the AI market by 2030 depends on our investment in custom chips. Did you spot the difference? These could be the headlines for the exact same slide, except the first one paints a very optimistic picture and focuses on generating confidence. The second one is cautiously optimistic and explicitly calls out our success depends on something custom chips. Now, if you're head of chip manufacturing at Apple, this dude, by the way, you'd probably go with option number two, so you can ask for more resources. That's why this tactic is super sneaky. Comment down below if you see this in your workplace, by the way. Zooming out a bit, these next few tips have to do with the overall structure of your presentation, or what Hearn calls the setup. And tactic number three is to always use the pyramid principle. As human beings, we think by default in a linear fashion. First, here's the data we looked at. The EV market is 10 times smaller than the AI market. Second, here are the insights we uncovered. Creating a groundbreaking EV car is financially risky. And finally, here is a conclusion. The Apple car project is not feasible and we should reallocate investment towards AI. The pyramid principle flips the order of these slides. We lead with the answer. We need to stop the Apple car project and go all in on AI then showcase the supporting arguments. Apple's strengths lie in software and hardware integration. We have no competitive advantage in EVs. The return on investment for EVs is unclear. And finally, surface the data to back up these claims. The AI market is projected to be 10 times the size of the EV market. According to Hearn, it's fine to think from the bottom up, but if you want a clear and impactful presentation, you want to present from the top down. Tip number four for strong slides. Do not use animations. Nine times out of 10, we do not have full control over the flow of our presentation. For example, when presenting to senior leaders, we're often interrupted with questions and comments like, hey, can we back up two slides? Or uh, where'd you get that number in the second bullet point? And to answer these questions, we need to be able to quickly jump around our presentation to land on the right slides. And in these instances, having fancy animations work against you since you have to frantically click around trying to find the right landing spot. The one exception where animations can elevate your slides is when you're presenting unilaterally, for example, in a town hall meeting, where you have full control over the flow and no one will interrupt you during the presentation. Tip number five, bias towards standalone slides. You know how in TED Talks, the speakers get away with having one word or one image on the slide, but at work, you mainly see slides packed full of text and data? Turns out there's a rule for when these two styles are appropriate. And the rule of thumb is, if you plan to share your deck after the presentation, for example, in a follow-up email, assume your slides will be circulated without you and bias 
towards making the materials as standalone as possible. If it's a low stakes presentation, or you know there will be a recording with your voiceover, then Hearn says you can use simple bullet points and minimal text. By the way, if you're getting value from this, let Hearn know by dropping a like. And I've also included a link to his full playbook, completely for free for some reason, down below. Now that we're done with the setup, Let's move on to the content within the slides. And the most important thing to remember here is to always be selling with call to actions. Diving right into an example of a weak slide, these are the sales numbers in these markets for these products. Okay, I know how to read, but what should I be doing with this information? A better slide with an explicit call to action would take the same data, but reorganize them around doubling our budget will solidify our number one position in the market. Or an implicit call to action might look something like, we delivered 75% year on year sales growth through a verticalization strategy, with the implication being, hey, I did a good job, so I'm setting myself up for a request in the next few slides. Slides that serve purely as updates should be kept to the minimum and follow the 80-20 rule. 80% 80 of slides should have call to actions with the goal of influencing the audience. 20% of slides can be educational. Tactic number seven is super underrated and is to avoid complex charts. According to Hearn, there are two reasons for this. First, most people get overwhelmed by anything more than a two by two matrix. Not us though, if you're subscribed to this channel, we're not most people, we smart. We the goodest. Second, complex charts can be extremely misleading. For example, on the left, we have a concentric circle chart showing our market share. It looks way bigger than it is because on the right, we see a more accurate representation using a simple bar chart. To help us decide which charts to use, just reference this table. We can use the ones on the left as much as we want. Bar charts, bubble charts, waterfalls, table charts, scatter plots, and line charts. For the other types of charts, if you're presenting to viewers of this channel, go ahead, because again, we know stupid. But if you're presenting to anyone else, think twice. Speaking of visuals, tactic number eight is to use callouts for clarity. If we take a look at this slide on the left, we see a table full of data on top and a few key takeaways below. Our eyes read, Corleone family has insufficient funds. And then we have to mentally match that bullet point with the corresponding cell above. Compare this with the slide on the right. By simply adding three callout boxes and numbering them, we've ensured that the linkage between the messages are clear and tight. Tip number nine for presentations, make trade-offs. Coming back to the Apple Car example, the conclusion is, we stop working on the Apple Car, we pivot to AI. And we got to this conclusion by uncovering multiple insights, which in turn are supported by lots of data. If you're responsible for presenting this, everything seems important. All these insights contributed to the conclusion, Catherine worked on this, Eddie worked on that, Craig worked on that, and we should be fair to everyone. The problem is, if we decide to include everything, our key message gets diluted. In this case, the number one insight might be, investment in AI provides a higher return on investment given Apple's software and hardware capabilities. And if we had just one hour with Tim Cook, that's the argument we should be focusing on. Tip number 10 is probably the simplest, but most overlooked, and is to put things in context. The golden rule to follow here is to never present numbers in isolation. For example, a 10% growth rate might be considered low until you find out the industry as a whole decreased by 2%. We don't know whether 40% market share is good or bad until we're told it increased 2x from last year versus a decrease of 15%. Asia has added 1.5 billion new internet users over the past decade. Okay. And that's the same as all internet users in Europe and Americas today. Okay, wow. Holy shit. If you found these tips helpful, you might want to check out four free tools you can use in your next presentation. See you on the next video. In the meantime, have a great one.